you know, spending 24-7 for such a long period of time, even with people who are your family and your friends, they start getting under your skin. So did it happen that the core team sort of had friction between it? What was the atmosphere like backstage? Because you're living in this heightened condition, tense condition. We were all very worried about Anna's health, but also worried about that all these thousands of people, what are they going to get out of it? They're coming with aspirations. They're looking at Anna to say this is going to come through. And it was not only Delhi, the pressure was from coming from all parts of India. I, the core team was very, very democratic, very participatory and very unanimous in the end. So even if sometimes we just say, all right, should we do, do this? You had, you had 15 against two and those two fell in line. So I think that's the way we did. It was very collective, pooling in your pooling. In you don't have any fights? At no, the back? We didn't have arguments and fights. No? No. In fact, we didn't. But because I don't know when there is no personal agenda. There's nothing in it for me. It's for a higher purpose. I think it, people, that's where this magic is. And did it ever come up that, uh, you know, because there were tweets about this, I'm sure, because you're so much on uh, cyberspace. Maybe you and Mr. Kejriwal and maybe the others should fast and Anaji should talk. You know, so did it ever come up that uh, you needed to fast? Or that you maybe should fast. Did it ever? Did this, you ever this, think this thought never came in? And number two, this was not an issue ever, because it was Anna's movement. It was Anna's fast. It's not my Kejriwal's movement or Kiran Bedi's movement or Bhushan's movement. Sorry, it's a people's it was, movement. It was no? Anna's move. Anna was a symbol, and Anna's fast was a concern. And Anna's had raised this flag of anti-corruption. We were all his, his soldiers. Our role was to see his fast reaches the objective and achieves the purpose for which it is. And you know, a lot of the supporters who were there, they sort of thought that if Anna wins and the bill gets passed, that equals end of corruption. But there's one telling tweet. It says, it's from Seek and Save. And um, he or she says, will the tra traffic cop on the street stop taking bribes once the bill is passed? You know, so it's a very simplistic approach. Why we come to this stage where nothing moves without corruption? Because the risk is so low. R risk is so low and the rewards are so substantial that people can walk away with thousands of crores and maybe spend even a few days in the prison. Oh, the money's gone overseas. You've got landed property overseas. Your children have studied in best of the colleges. So you reap your rewards. So the risk is so low and the rewards are substantial. With Lokpal, you will have very high risk and the reward will be low. Now, that high risk means doesn't mean that people stop taking risks. But the risk of getting caught will be very high and the punishment will be a certainty. That's the kind of system which we try to create. So in answer to this uh, tweet, you would probably say that, yes, it will deter a traffic cop from taking a bribe. It will scare him. Or he will think twice and he start looking around. He will think twice and he start looking around. So there will be a higher risk. So the calculation will be stronger. Can you say truly that you have never ever done anything which is corrupt or maybe uh, used your influence wrongfully? Never. Never. I've never abused the law. I never see, ex accepted a wrong legal direction, illegal direction. I've never got anybody wrongly arrested. I've never accepted a bribe. When the, and I have been ruthless against those people who were indulging into these matters. I can speak with my clear conscience that I've never fallen a prey to this. I was, I remember in Mizo, let's say if I mention a particular state or let me not mention it, 